in retrospect, I wish I was better at picking up the signs. I don't think I picked up on the signs of how much this really was affecting him and how these changes that one year really did take a toll on him and, and how he looked at things. I didn't appreciate that or understand that. And I wish I did. I wish I did a better job. Godmother. <laughs> Stop clicking the back button. That's not the button you want. No, just don't click. I won't. Button. I won't touch it. Okay. What What would I do without you? Oh, it's <laughs> really. When Steve started having pain, when he was, you know, nine, ten, eleven, he's quite tall. Both my boys are really tall and big for their age, and so when he started growing. I remember my older son had really horrible growing pains. So I attributed what he was going through to growing pains. And of course, he's very active in sports and, and that sort of thing. So I kind of blew it off and thought, there's nothing wrong, right? And he'd cut, oh, my leg really hurts. And I'd be, oh, you bruised yourself at hockey. It's nothing. So I think it was uh, grade, uh, grade seven, we were out at recess, and we were just playing soccer, you know, just a typical boy things. Next thing you know, the soccer ball hits my leg, and there was a pretty excruciating pain. I'm like, well, that doesn't seem very right. I thought I'd maybe just bruised it, just falling or playing hockey or something, but as the days and possibly weeks went on, every time there was just like a little bump, it was just, the, the pain was just getting worse and worse. One day though, um... I was putting makeup on, looking in the mirror, and it was weird, because he walked by me, and he was limping so hard, and he was carrying a bowl of cereal, and the cereal was popping out of the bowl. I'm like, Steve, you're dropping cereal all over. And it's like, that's it, you're going to the doctor. So I took him into the doctor, and again, doctor's looking at him, he looks perfectly healthy, he seems perfectly healthy, nothing's wrong, right? Um, they do an x-ray and I just went on with my day. So I was l sitting in my office, um, just working. Call came in and it was actually from the doctor's office. And they said, you know, they've taken a look at his x-ray and we have now been referred to the oncology department at BC Children's Hospital. I don't think you're ever ready to hear that. And, and it was, you know, the do on the other end, the doctor is saying things like, Stephen has to stop all sports now. He needs to get into the hospital, they'll be calling you. And once they, you know, have a grasp of what's going on, you know, but right now, just stop everything and wait for them. So you're just sort of sitting there waiting. Like, what is this? I don't even know. What a weird phone call. It was just a surreal day. There was a doctor from Winnipeg, and his name, I'll never, I don't know why I remember it, Dr. Kenneth Brown. You know, he sat me down and told me what he thought it was, and that likely, you know, they had to confirm it, but likely he had osteosarcoma. As a 12-year-old, I could see that my mom was very upset. But when you're 12, you don't really understand uh, why she's this upset. Uh, I just thought, oh, well, you know, there's just something wrong with my leg. They'll just get it fixed. I didn't really understand the magnitude of what it could be or couldn't be. There was no way of knowing until they performed a surgery to get the tumor out, biopsy it, and then they would know for sure. The only way that they could get that tumor to biopsy it would be that they would have to actually have him knocked out in a CT machine and literally core out the tumor out of his leg and, and then biopsying it and seeing. That's the only way to know 100%. But to get to that process was a challenge because the machines, there's lots of kids in need and there's all kinds of different uses for those machines. There's only so many to go around. And what they had to do was they had to clear the schedule, sterilize the whole room, which at one point somebody explained to me the cost of the sterilization of the room was something like over 100,000, and that this would take weeks. So we were just in holding pattern while we were waiting. The surgery itself didn't take long. Once he went in, it wasn't long at all, maybe 
Within an hour or two, he was out. And finally, you know, we got the phone call, which was the best. That was the best phone call I've ever had in my life. It was a phone call from Dr. Kenneth Brown, who said, you know, come in. We're going to sit down and go over this with you, but I have good news. So just come in. Stephen had something more rare than osteosarcoma. He had something called an osteoostoma. His was actually benign doing nothing possibility down the road this would start to reoccur. He would have to be monitored and watched closely if anything unusual like that showed up. You know, and that's something to go on for the rest of his life, but good to go. The recovery was the worst part because the surgery had happened right at the beginning of summer. So I pretty much spent my whole grade seven summer just sitting on the couch. So because they cored out section of his tibia, he had to be on crutches. If he would have twisted his leg, he would have broken it. That was a little unfortunate. I spent the whole, the remainder of that whole hockey season and football season just watching friends and not actually really playing. But he was no longer active, so he gained a lot of weight and his self-esteem all of that, um, that was hard. He had a really hard emotional comeback into it. He was also out of sports for almost a year because of just healing time and the whole thing. It took a whole year to get back into a hockey season. You know, eventually he had another growth spurt and shot up again and everything was normal, but there was a long time there where it was really hard on him. I didn't know he was even relentlessly bullied at school. Yeah, uh, growing up I was always kind of bullied. Trying to find new friends was a little difficult, but uh, um, you know, I got through it and um, I've actually met a lot of wonderful people on the way. In retrospect, I wish I was better at picking up the signs. I don't think I picked up on the signs of how much this really was affecting him and how these changes that one year really did take a toll on him and, and how he looked at things. I didn't appreciate that or understand that. I cannot stress enough how much I'm grateful for the people I have in my life now. You're not alone. That's the biggest thing really is there are other kids who are going through the same things, whether it be going through a medical procedure or bullying. You just need to know that it'll always get better in the end. It, it's important for you to, to know that you're not alone. You're just not alone. Oh, there. There. It's in here. There it is. You're great with the family selfie. It's got the long arms. It's the long arms. It helps. That's a good one. We'll go to a restaurant and like the waitress will be like, oh, do you want me to take a picture? I'm like, no, mom loves the selfies. <laughs> Lives for the selfies. We live for the selfie. <laughs> I was so blessed because my story in the end was fine. But how many? It's not. They don't have that result. And that breaks my heart. My favorite month of the year to work in is August. That is the month of miracles. I always increase my donations that month, and it's the month that I actually set goals to donate more money to CMN than in any other month. To be associated with a company who has such a close relationship with a cause that means so much to me and so much to so many families. I'm just so proud to be part of that.